you like what we're doing, please consider subscribing. It's totally free and you can unsubscribe at any time and it really helps us out a lot. Thanks for watching. Hope you liked the video. Gosh, you're so knowledgeable. You've obviously been, I mean, you know, you have it all broken down into a science almost. It's like, you know, but you were one of the few people, I think, very unique situation where you got to be where like there was that advertising driven TV and you were in there right at the right time. And like, I, I have so much stuff that you were in. I mean, I don't even know where to start, you know, from, from Laverne and Shirley, uh, what it is enough fantasy Island, little house, love boat chips, Mork and Mindy silver spoons. I mean, it just goes on like this. And uh, <laughs> that, that's not even the movies, you know, I'm not even going to do that yet, but how did you work that into your life? I mean, you must have been really, really busy. Uh, yes, uh, you're doing a school. My mom kept me in public school mm -hmm. when I wasn't on set. I was on set a lot to pull off that, you know, a lot of work. And there's also pilots that didn't go to series, other stuff that went to series, maybe briefly. I had a great show, uh, Sticking Together or Mackenzie's of Paradise Cove with Clue Mulliger, Sean Marshall, and um, I think that was like 76, 77. Um, that, uh, well, it's show business. It's entertainment industry. And if you're going to kind of set yourself up as this is a, not a one shot, maybe I'll do something and I'll become a star. You're like, this is what I want to do for my life. Once I did learn that my grandfather does this and he did it his whole life. Really? I'm like, yeah, he started on stage. It's like, as soon as he could walk, he's on when stage. When was that? If you don't mind saying, when was that, that that really did hit you? Oh, uh, 78. So in, I was about eight. Yeah. And they had a screening of the kid in LA and press and, you know, Leonard Malton was there. That's, that's a big start of me. Reviewers are always big. Siskel and Ebert and like Leonard Malton. I grew up with them. You know, as an actor. Yeah. I hold him in oh, high regard. Yes. And, um, we ran into Leonard Malton recently and, uh, he's doing great. He's, uh, full of so many great stories. And he goes, it's funny, um, uh, when the kid had debuted, you know, it had kind of gone late for the screening and Jackie s sat on Chaplin's lap and fell asleep during the screening of the kid when it originally came out. Mm -hmm. And when they did the new one, I sat on my grandfather's lap and fell asleep during the movie. So that was, it. I, uh, I do, I fall asleep during movies, uh, but I did uh, see, you know, afterwards, great story. I see them fetting my grandfather and I'd heard trickles of stories of, you know, oh, he's a big star, all oh, the money or the, uh, you know, the square got so full they had to lift his car above the crowd. And at six or seven years old, I'm like, you're all full of it. Uh, at one point, my parents were carnies, <laughs> basically like short time con artists oh. and uh, kind of hippies, you know, counterculture, anti-establishment, anti-authority. So I was definitely raised with like a way to always look a way to break into a building and uh, look for the fire exit in case the police hey, come. And it's just, it these was were like, different times. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, it was it, awesome. And, but it was still analog. So you could prank phone call and get away with it and uh, there's no cameras i'm so lucky that i did have my stardom or uh dur or especially it's tougher when you're an adolescent it's already tough being a teenager but to do that in front of the cameras and you know have that kind of press and peer pressure and there's a community of other actors your age looking at you going what's your next movie what's your it's always it's it's kind of weird it's weird enough. And your original question was, how did you do that on top of real life? And um, the you audition after school. So between three and six o'clock, you're in the car right after school. And you know if you have an audition because you get out of school. And if your mom's not there, you, you get on the school bus, you go home or you walk home. Um, I was like a mile and a half from school. If you walk out and your mom's there in the car, you know, holding up like new wardrobe, you're like, oh, we're running over to the valley and we got to be there in 25 minutes. And so your mom do sounds great, by the way. Great. Oh, it's, you know, crazy circumstances. Um, Because uh, they do ask the impossible. They're like, can you get to the valley? Then can you get over to Sheila Manning, this commercial agent over in like the west side of L.A.? And then go ahead and head to Burbank also for you have a call back at five o'clock. Oh, yeah. You're supposed to get to hit three locations in L.A. Uh, forget it yeah you know kids would live 
you know, an hour outside of town too. It's expensive to live in LA. So they'll live in better communities where it's cheaper, but then you got to sit in the car and, you know, do your, your homework in the car, learn your lines in the car, um, change. That was a serious drama thing. Okay. Now put on a commercial shirt. So you're changing the car and changing hair. We would stop by my great grandmother's house and dye my hair because we found out who was cast as the dad of the mom. And we're like, they're brunettes. Keith, you're a toehead. We're like, well, let's get some hair dye and make my hair dark for the damn audition. And any actor awesome. that didn't do that um, didn't doesn't want the job, obviously. 